Today's video is sponsored by Brilliant. So today I have one of those boards in house that makes it really difficult for me to continue to review gaming keyboards. This is the Wilba Tech Salvation from Wilba and Salvin. It's a 60% layout with a unique leaf spring mounting system. And the design philosophy here is supposed to encourage tinkering or experimentation. It's not cheap, but it is an absolute joy to type on. And the group buy is unlimited, but that window's closing very soon. You have until May 5th to get on. So if you like what you see today, you gotta move fast. You ready? Let's go! So the Wilba Tech Salvation is the brainchild of Wilba and it's manufactured by Salvin. These are available in both ANSI and ISO and they'll run you right about $300 for the case, weight, PCB, and plate. Stabilizers, switches, caps, and cable are on you. For transparency, this is an early review unit and it was provided by Wilba and Salvin for review. As always, no other compensation took place. It doesn't affect anything I have to say about it. I bought switches, caps, and stabilizers and Space hooked it up with the cable. The case itself is bead blasted anodized aluminum. It has a 7.5 degree typing angle, four rubber feet to keep it situated, and it's pretty heavy as well with the included weight. It's available in five different colors, including business gray, the most hilarious color ever. This is the Samurai Blue. You have two different PCB options when ordering, so you can go either Hot Swap with the Wilbatec Avocado PCB or Solderable with the WT60D Weird Flex PCB, which we have in-house today. The Weird Flex is designed to provide, well, flex, really, which is accomplished by these two long slots above and below the alphas. As you'll see, you still get plenty of flex when you're using a full plate, which is how we're gonna build it out today, but you can really dial this thing up to insane amounts of flex if you go with like a half plate or a no plate build. The slots make for some really artful trace routes as well. It's a really nice looking PCB. We have support for both QMK and VIA. These came gift wrapped from Salvin himself, so don't expect final retail to arrive like this, but it kind of felt like my birthday, which I appreciate. The plate here is nickel plated copper clad FR4 fiber glass. Got a little flex to it, not a ton like a PC plate. You can see guides around the alphas as well. These can be dremeled like along those lines to do a half plate if you'd like. I'm going to build it out standard to get a better feel today for what you get out of the box. Inside the case, you have a center mounted internal brass weight that's Cerakoted in black. You also see little channels that will be home to our leaf springs and therein lies the primary unique feature of this board, the mounting system. First, we apply the pour on pads to the channels. They're going to go in the center of the channels, ignoring the outer two most channels. Those will only be used in builds where people are using their own PCBs that may not have mounting points that line up with the ones provided. We have a sheet of these leaf springs. These are FR4 as well, and you just snap them out of their frame and then file or clip the little rough edges to make them all smooth boys. Four of these have a hole on each side. They're gonna be used to mount the standoffs. We're gonna build two leaves with standoffs like so, and then eight leaves with a rubber bumper. And when you're done, you're left with a little bounce in each leaf spring. So the plate and PCB assembly are gonna like float, suspended on top of these leaves inside the case. And you can get a lot of movement on the entire key bed, more so than any keyboard I've ever seen. Now for a board this nice, you really need to have some absolute banger switches. And that's why I decided to go with the TKC Dragon Fruits. These are a highly underrated switch that I decided to- Come on. Stop what you're doing and like the video right now if I got you. I actually opted to go with Ink Blacks, lubed with 205 Grade Zero, and Desk Keys Films. The stabs are Novel Keys PCB mounts. I opted to go with the Holy Mod on these, so we'll use 205 Grade Zero here as well. If you're not wise to the Holy Mod, Hamaji has has easily the best video out walking you through this process. And shout out Ted, who I believe is the OG on this mod. The PCB, at least on the solderable version, gives you some flexibility in switch position as well, like using a stepped caps lock, for instance, which I opted to do. The sockets here, of course, support five pin and they're south facing. There's no RGB to speak of anywhere on this board. So lighting those shine through keycaps, not gonna be an issue. The bottom row layout was new to me. My guy Glarsis informs me that it's a Sengan layout. It uses a 7U spacebar, then symmetrical clusters of one 1.5, 1, and 1.5 U for your lower mods. Think of it like an HHKB layout, but with a longer space bar and it retains the control keys. I did opt to do some key remapping as well because by default, the arrows are on WASD and I prefer them on IJKL with the caps lock as my function key. Luckily, VIA makes this a piece of cake. So with everything soldered up, you have to situate the completed plate and PCB assembly in the case. It's gonna mount to the two standoffs we installed earlier, and it is a bit of a balancing act to get it situated just right as the whole assembly moves vertically and has to be clear of all four corners to do so. The artisan cap was a gift from Salvin. It's solid copper with a forced patina to go with the nautical theme of this board. It couldn't have come out better. It looks and feels amazing. The 
So overall, I'm both very pleased and a bit disappointed with the sound of this board. Very pleased because with it being an all aluminum case, I really expected there to be some element of ping or nasty case resonance going on in there. And I just don't get it. The actual sound is very clean. There is nothing here that you don't want. A bit disappointed because I wish the pitch was more consistent on this board row to row. And I personally prefer a lower, deeper, thawkier sound. If the whole board sounded like the bottom row, I'd be in absolute heaven. But that's largely down to personal preference, so it's not like I can deduct points for that. But the typing feel though, that's where this board really shines. The mounting system does loads to provide a nice amount of flex, and the board feels great, whether you have a soft touch or you're absolutely hammering it. As configured, it's a flex though. It's not like bouncy or springy really, which I imagine you could accomplish if you went with like a half plate build. The value conversation is a bit tough because there's really not a lot out there to compare it to. 300 for a bare bones isn't entry level. Those of you that prefer a 65%, myself included, may be put off by the fact that it's a 60%. And with its unique bottom row, you're certainly gonna have to shell for some higher end caps. So there's nothing really budget about this board. It's easy to get in the weeds when you're talking about price points and percentages. It makes my head hurt. I was never very good with numbers. Since allotting some of my work from home time into tackling self-improvement, I found a tremendous resource in Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video and a platform that provides active learning exercises for math and science. Active learning is a different approach where instead of listening to lectures or content, you learn through interactive problem solving. Like you ever just have an idea for an app out of nowhere, but you have zero idea where to start pursuing that? Chances are that's not a topic you're gonna get your head around by listening to an audio book or watching a YouTube video. Brilliant can take a large scale concept like that and break it down into smaller exercises. So you don't just get the information, you start to access the logic behind how everything fits together to give you a deeper understanding of something as complex as software development. If you're ready to tackle something new for yourself, go to brilliant.org slash bad Seed Tech. You can sign up for free. The first 200 of you to do so will get 20% off your annual membership. Big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today and thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. The main attraction with the Salvation is the mounting system and the idea that you can configure it in a few different ways to really ramp up the flex. Alex did a no plate build on this and it looks like a trampoline in the footage. In full plate form, it certainly doesn't feel as stiff as any tray mount and it's not as stiff as like the gasket mount implementation on the GMMK Pro. I guess the best way to say it is this. At first glance, I probably wouldn't have bought in. Like the mounting system definitely would have piqued my curiosity, but the 60% would have made me pass. I wasn't even 100% sure I was gonna keep this thing long-term after the review, just based on the layout. But after building out and typing on this thing, I'm not gonna let it get away. I can definitely see myself going back and trimming out the alpha portion of that plate and doing a true half plate build. Even as an early unit, the anodizing looks absolutely gorgeous. The build guide was very straightforward. The tolerances and the hardware are all spot on. It feels like quality, with the only knock I have being that the surface of the plate fingerprints easily. It's hard to keep clean and mine was scuffed a bit. Nothing that's visible when the caps are installed. And again, this is an early sample. And that's about all I can really say about it. I'd much rather have this over something like a tofu 60. When it comes down to shopping specifically for flex, this would definitely be my go-to if I wasn't budget constrained or if I didn't want to go with one of the numerous polycarb entry-level boards that we're seeing right now. Knowing you guys as my audience, I'd be willing to bet the majority of the comments under this video will be comparing the value of this board to like the Icky 68 or the KBD 67 Lite. I haven't tried either of those boards yet but I will soon. If you have the pockets for it and you're in the market for a super high quality 60% layout with a clackier sound, a top tier typing feel and some room to experiment, the Wilbatech Salvation is definitely worth a look. As always, links down below for everything that we talked about today. Any questions at all, hit me in the comments. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.